Like all my whole life I'd been working up to being an athlete and going to Paralympic Games, it'd always been my goal. And everything had been taken away at once and I wasn't really sure what to do and what I would do now. Look, glance through your CV, you have 17 European, World and Paralympic medals stretching over the last nine years and two Paralympic medals, one silver and one gold, meaning you are the reigning Olympic 100 metre freestyle S5 champion and now Tully Kearney MBE. Can you take us back to the beginning and how you first got into sport? So initially I actually hated the water. It was used as hydrotherapy so for me growing up I always wanted to be physically active and do everything my older brother could but my older brother doesn't have a disability and I just couldn't keep up with him. He joined a swimming club and basically I just spent most of my evenings on poolside watching him swim until when I was about eight the coach came up to me and said do you want to join in? And when I got in the water, I suddenly realised that I could keep up with kids my age. It was something I could do that my brother could do. And I didn't feel disabled. I could do everything myself. I didn't need help. I just fell in love with it and eventually it became my coping mechanism. So if I had a rough day or I was frustrated about what I couldn't do, I'd get in the water and everything would just disappear. It was weird being at Oak Paralympic Games during a pandemic. It didn't really feel like a Paralympic Games. Uh, I went into it with an injury, so I was quite nervous that I'd have to withdraw again. And it was a little bit stressful for me, but once I got into the first day of racing, I think all that just disappeared and my love for the sport just came back and I just really enjoyed it. So we had the World Championships earlier on in the year in Madeira and uh, that was a really cool experience. I went and retained my three world titles but I also broke three world records in my three swims so yeah I was pretty pleased with that. We've got the world championships next year in Manchester that's really exciting obviously being my home pool that I've trained at for many years and hopefully retain my world titles again but the biggest thing that I'm aiming towards now is Paris and my goal is to never be beaten again. With having dystonia, my dystonia got a lot worse in the 2015-16 season triggered by an injury. So unfortunately I had to withdraw from Rio because of that. I lost my place to train, I lost my funding and at that point I wasn't an athlete. My whole life had been working up to being an athlete and going to Paralympic Games, it had always been my goal. And everything had been taken away at once and I wasn't really sure what to do and what I would do now. For me, I didn't really want to get back into swimming because I thought, well, if I try and I realise I can't swim anymore, that's going to be devastating, so what if I just never try? And then after about six months, my mum made me realise that that was quite a silly thing and I don't know how, but she just knew that I'd figure it out. And I basically started in the Learn to Swim lane, tried to figure out what movement I had and how I could swim. And over about the period of a year, I went from the Learn to Swim lane up to the quickest lane. And then in 2018, I started swimming with City Manchester again. And I made the team for Europeans, and I think I shocked everyone. So I had to be reclassified for my new level of disability. So I started as an S9, and then when I was reclassified, I'm now an S5. I think once I went to Europeans and got a gold and a bronze, it kind of made me realise, well, actually, maybe I still can go to Paralympics. Maybe this is still an option for me. And since then, I've just been like, well, what, what can I do? How can I show other people that are going through struggles or cerebral palsy or dystonia or whatever it may be, that you can still achieve things even when you've got a really tough time? Yeah, CP Sport do such great work. It's really important. I think the biggest one is that at all their events, everyone there has cerebral palsy. I think a lot of kids are at state schools where they might be the only disabled child. So coming together at an event where you can be around a load of people with cerebral palsy, I think it's just nice to see someone similar like yourself so that you know you're not going through it alone. So Leo has cerebral palsy. He is non-verbal and he has quadriplegic cerebral palsy, which means that he doesn't really have much use of his hands either and he can't sit unaided. And he is such a happy little boy. He uses an electric wheelchair, but because he can't sit, he didn't have a walker, he didn't have any way of getting around. So I was able to borrow a frame runner from the Manchester Frame Running Club. Uh, he borrowed it for three months and by the end of it he was running circles around in the garden. Uh, he absolutely loves his frame so I decided to fundraise to buy him his own frame and he now has his own frame runner but it made me quite sad that it took that long for him to find something that he can do and I really think that kids as young as three, four, five 
should be able to access the right equipment so that they can get into sport. I think that's really important to start at a young age and it's made such a difference to Leo's life having frame running. And just finally, what's the most memorable moment in sport so far? Obviously the Tokyo is a big one going and winning a Paralympic medal but it's not really the fact that I won a medal, it's the fact that I'd always wanted to call myself a Paralympian and I thought that that dream was over. But the fact that um, with a lot of help and support from people, especially my mum, I was able to actually go and achieve my dreams and the, the fact that I was able to overcome everything and work through it, even when there were so many times when I wanted to give up, the thing that I'm most proud of is pushing through and actually achieving what I set out to achieve.